What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of The 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below. Thanks for being here guys to the best gaming related show here on YouTube. And I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, also known as PUBG, is one of the most popular battle royale games in the world. Now, what I will say, guys, is that PUBG used to actually be pretty much the number one BR for quite some time, but we also, of course, had, you know, Fortnite come into the fray. We also, of course, have Warzone more, you know, recently, and, you know, Battle Royale, or BR, as a whole has grown in a in a drastic way the most popular game mode in in the world and it's not even close when it comes to gaming it's probably the most popular game mode in the history of gaming as well and it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon now PUBG guys obviously has had some issues with this first title in in this what i believe is going to be a long withstanding franchise with that being said though i think PUBG is thinking that if they make a sequel, it's going to obviously kind of reinvigorate a lot of people's thoughts towards PUBG with updated graphics and things of that nature. And we are just starting to hear more and more about the upcoming PUBG title, that being PUBG 2. So I want to go ahead and talk about everything that we know so far about this title. We can break it down, and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article... Uh, from PC games. PUBG is not New State expected in 2022. New State, guys, is, of course, the uh, the mobile title that is coming or sequel to PUBG Mobile. A PUBG sequel in some form or, or other is expected to arrive by 2022 for PC and consoles. This is a different game to the mobile-only PUBG New State, a futuristic battle royale game revealed this past week. What I'm going to say, though, guys, is there was a lot of backlash, people not wanting there to be another mobile title in PUBG. But here's what I'm going to say about it. The fact that we're getting a mobile game as well as a sequel to PUBG as a whole is very exciting. On top of their expanding the universe, similar to what Rainbow Six is doing, by creating another title, a narrative in that universe, the Callisto Protocol. Kind of reminds me a lot of what Rainbow Six is doing. You got Rainbow Six Siege and then you got Rainbow Six Quarantine, which is kind of the horror version or horror side of the Rainbow Six series. You got the Callisto Protocol, the same kind of thing here with PUBG. We'll see how it all ties in at some form or another. But I like how they're expanding upon the legacy, the lore here, the story of PUBG. It's very exciting. Well-known player unknowns Battlegrounds data miner player IGN tweeted that New State is not the uh, PUBG 2 that's been expected for some time now. In response to someone asking if New State is the follow-up we've been waiting for, player IGN replied, "The PUBG 2 thing PC and console is something we're still waiting for by 2022." So that gives you kind of, you know, somewhat of a timeline here. Makes sense as well because the Callisto Protocol, which is within the PUBG universe, is releasing in 2022 as well. Obviously, with the pandemic going on, these things could be, you know, pushed back, or they might be able to come up, you know, even release sooner. It's hard to say, but I think it sounds like they're going to try to release those two titles around one another so that they can kind of cross-promote between the Callisto Protocol, which we all know that horror titles nowadays are becoming more and more popular as we go, and PUBG, obviously, is still a massive brand, has a huge fan base, guys. I'm really, really excited about what they are doing as a franchise. He stated that New State is going to stay on mobile, at least for now, and is not expected to interact with any of the other versions of PUBG currently available. This lines up with a report from January that a mobile game was due this year and another PUBG release next year. Developed by PUBG Corp and published by Craft and Inc., PUBG New State drops players into a new 8 8x8 map called Troy. Set in 2051, it features futuristic vehicles, more destructible environments, and according to the initial press release, players can enjoy next-generation survival features that evolve the battlegrounds. Now, this is the first step towards a wider PUBG universe crafting is gradually putting together. Last December, the Callisto Protocol, a single-player horror game from former Dead Space devs, was revealed to take place 300 years into PUBG's future, which is super exciting as well, guys. Obviously, we already talked about, PUBG, uh, about the Callisto Protocol. You guys can check out all that content here, but... 
PUBG 2, guys, what I really like about this is that they're not going to stay complacent, which a lot of titles out there seem to be doing. Look, games like Fortnite, we're not necessarily saying that Fortnite has to get a sequel, but a sequel might be something that would be in their best interest. Games like CSGO that have been around for so long, a lot of these games have become complacent and not created sequels and such because maybe they just didn't feel like they needed to. PUBG feels, instead of updating the current game, they want to, you know, they obviously want to add a lot to, you know, a, a future version, a newer v version of PUBG, which I think is a really good idea as well. They want to compete against the likes of Warzone, without a doubt, and other BRs out there, Apex Legends, of course, Fortnite guys. These are titles that are all competing with one another, and I really like what PUBG is doing, though. I really like that they're creating a sequel. You think of a game like even Overwatch. You know, Activision Blizzard creates Overwatch. They're also creating Overwatch 2. Not being complacent is a really, in my opinion, the best way. You've got to be constantly on your toe, toes in this industry, constantly evolving, because if you don't, there's a chance that those eyeballs are going to go from your game onto another, and those people playing your game are going to start you know, drifting off to other games. So you've got to be on your toes, and creating a bigger, wider universe here is a great idea, in my opinion. Now, you can pre-register for PUBG New State via the Google Play Store. Um, now... Obviously, guys, you know, New State is something that even though I would have been really upset if it was just New State, we were just getting an updated, like a new mobile game and we weren't going to get a full, you know, PUBG 2. I was more, obviously I was excited about the Callisto Protocol. We were kind of getting expanded universe here, but I thought that PUBG 2 would make a lot of sense. And, you know, I'm just really glad that New State is not the only new thing coming from PUBG. Um, you know, obviously having the second game coming is extremely exciting to me. Because uh, it could have been something like Command and Conquer, where they released R Command and Conquer Rivals on mobile, but didn't announce a new Command and Conquer actual, you know, PC game. They only announced the mobile version. Same thing with Diablo. The backlash that happened with Diablo Immortal, and not, re you know, announcing Diablo 4. And then obviously a year later, we get Diablo 4, you know, announced. But I'm just saying that I'm glad that PUBG Corp stayed kind of somewhat ahead of this talking about, you know, new state, and now we're getting PUBG 2, of course, coming around the same time as the Callisto Protocol. It's incredibly exciting to say the least. Now, with that being said, though, guys, PUBG Corp confirms that PlayerUnknown's Battleground 2 is in development. So, Nicholas uh, Sacadellis from Charlie Intel, PUBG Corp has officially confirmed a sequel to PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is in development for PC, mobile, and consoles. So, PUBG saw its heyday in the summer of 2018, hitting over 1 million concurrent Steam players on average for several months and peaking at 3.2 million concurrent players. Now, obviously, guys, um, you know, player IGN is obviously the leaker of, of all the PUBG content for the most part. PUBG Corp's newest game is in the works and is set to be a direct sequel to their hit Battle Royale title player known as Battlegrounds. Now, it'll be interesting to see how this kind of works, guys, from the first game to this one. Um, obviously, you know, what would be kind of interesting is are they, are they going to be kind of integrating like Call of Duty does with Warzone, you know, Black Ops Cold War being integrated into, you know, Call of Duty Warzone. How are they going to do this with PUBG? too. It's going to be really interesting to say the least. The biggest thing for me though guys that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on is is PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds 2 or PUBG 2 going to be free to play? I think that is going to be the biggest question and I think it's going to be, it could be the real make or break for this title. If it's free to play guys like Warzone and Fortnite and, and some of these other titles out there, it could be absolutely huge. But if they're going to put it behind a paywall, that's where I just don't know if it's going to be able to compete with games like Warzone and such because I think that was one of the big things that kind of left uh, you, you know PUBG kind of in the dust, so to speak, with games like Apex, Call of Duty Warzone, and even, of course, Fortnite. And, you know, all these other new games that are also coming out that are free to play. I think PUBG 2 needs to be free to play. Let me know what you guys think about that. So apparently... The secret project extreme from PUBG Corp will be the authentic sequel to the PC and console multi-platform, which will continue the worldview of Battleground, according to a document provided by player IGN. Obviously, there's been no, no, numerous tweets and such, guys. The new sequel will also include a mobile edition, just like its spiritual successor. The mobile PC and console version is expected to be published by Tencent Games, which is pretty exciting as well. I mean, I'm a fan of Tencent, guys. They obviously are the ones who own... Uh, none other than Fortnite and League of Legends and such. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what they um, end up doing here with PUBG 2. 
Now, the game engine. The game will most likely be on Unreal Engine 4, as several Project Extreme job listings from PUBG Corp request Unreal Engine 4 experience. So, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds currently runs on Unreal Engine 4 as well. So the release date, so the exact release date for the game is unknown. However, in a recent interview with Bloomberg, it was revealed that a new mobile game, uh, Mobile Battle Royale title, is slated for 2021. Alongside this release is a play on PC and console release by 2022 of another PUBG-related game. This could very well be PUBG 2 or the Callisto Protocol or both, which would be absolutely awesome. Now, will PUBG have cross-play capa uh, uh, capability? According to player IGN, the game will not support cross-platform play. He originally said it would, but later rescinded his claim in a separate tweet. So that's really unfortunate, guys. That's that's a big unfortunate thing that's not going to support cross-platform play. That's going to be, that along with it not being free-to-play, if it isn't going to be free-to-play, that is where it's going to be really, I think it could be detrimental to the success of PUBG 2. If you have to pay for it, and it's not going to support cross-platform, that is where I just don't know if it's going to be able to compete with other BRs out there. People would just decide to play, you know, Warzone or, or play something free like, you know, Fortnite or something. I just don't know if PUBG is big enough at this point to be able to sustain being a, a pay-to-play type of a style game. Now, if it releases with the Callisto Protocol as a package for like $30 or even $60, maybe that maybe will intrigue more people. Hard to say, though. Um, now, the game is expected to release on all modern consoles, PS5, Xbox Series X, as PC, and mobile. Uh, we don't know, obviously, if it's going to come out on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One. Hopefully, it does, uh, but maybe it won't. Maybe it'll only come on the next gen. I know a lot of you out there are having trouble getting a PS5, getting an Xbox Series X or S, and so that's something that, you know, obviously is, is concerning, to say the least, because we definitely want everyone to have those modern consoles before a game like this would release. Now... We've talked about the Callisto Protocol. PUBG Corp has been in the works for several years now to expand upon the game's universe. On top of the release, uh, a sequel to PUBG, a spinoff game is now planned titled the Callisto Protocol. This game will be developed by Striking Distance Studios in California. It's set to be a single-player horror experience led by the creator Dead Space, Glenn Schofield. The release date is slated to be in 2022. So that's really exciting as well to see how this is going to connect with PUBG and PUBG 2 and such. And just in this universe, like I said... And the fact that it kind of looks like a, a Dead Space game or Dead Space spinoff is really exciting as well. Obviously, you got the Dead Space creator in Glenn Schofield. It's going to be interesting to say the least. I'm very excited about the Callisto Protocol to say the least, guys. But I'm really excited about PUBG 2 as well. This is a title that has got a lot of possibility. I just think that the big things that they need to improve upon... Obviously, you know, continuing the update and kind of service, you know, PUBG is really important, but I also think, you know, expanding upon what they're doing and, and trying to make it free to play as well as, you know, cross play, I think is really huge. Maybe they can add it later on, kind of like what they did with Apex Legends, that being Respawn Entertainment. Uh, it's going to be interesting to say the least what they decide to do here. We know that the game's coming and we kind of have an idea of, of a number of things, right? Like whether crossplay is going to happen, when the release date's going to be, you know, if, you know, what is it going to release on and how's it going to kind of connect somewhat with, you know, the Callisto Protocol and, and just, you know, the PUBG Mobile and all that stuff. They're building something special here. I just think that they need to put some things in place to try to almost keep up with the times of BR as a whole because it's constantly evolving. Fortnite's evolving. Warzone's evolving. And a number of other titles out there are evolving. So it needs to do the same thing, I believe, if it wants to continue, you know, raising the bar, going to the next level, and staying up there with these other titles out there. Now, maybe PUBG Corp doesn't feel like it needs to compete with those. It just needs to kind of do its own thing, do what it does right, and it'll just grow with time. But if it wants to be one of the biggest BRs in the world, once again, it has to be constantly evolving. And that's my opinion, guys, and I would love to hear yours in the comment section down below. Let's have a real conversation about it. What do you guys think about PUBG 2? Are you guys excited about it? Let me know. And for more PUBG 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Many in the Diablo community have wanted a, a sequel, a continuation of this franchise, guys. And we're finally getting more information about Diablo 4. 
I am incredibly excited. I mean, obviously, from everything that we've seen so far, from, from the title, from trailers to gameplay to just all the cinematics, Blizzard is still one of the best in the business when it comes to the cinematics from a graphical perspective and just really immersing you into these living, breathing places. And I'm really excited. Like I said about, about Diablo 4, I want to talk everything that we know about this title right here, right now. We can break it down, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article written by Tom Sr. of PC Gamer, the latest on Diablo 4 and Hell's Darker New Direction. Here's everything that we know about Diablo 4. After years of will they, won't they, Blizzard finally revealed Diablo 4 at BlizzCon 2019. At BlizzCon 2021, Blizzard also announced the Rogue class and revealed some new details on the PvP zones called Fields of Hatred. Diablo 4 is being pitched as a return to the darker look of early Diablo with even more blasphemy and profane imagery per capita. It'll feature a shared open world and it's online only. Some will be, disapp will be disappointed to hear. Other players won't always be around though. Blizzard tells us that we don't have to worry about strangers bugging us for trades while we complete important story moments as an example, and PvP will be contained to the fields of hatred. So it'll be interesting to see how that all works, guys. When you hear online only, that definitely disappoints me because I like to be able to play at my own pace at times. I like to be able to, if I want to play the single-player story by myself, I'll do that. If I want to play co-op with my friends, I love doing that. And then playing online is obviously really important as well. I think out of all the aspects of a full package, that being campaign, multiplayer, and co-op, up, I think multiplayer is most important because that brings you back over and over again. But I still think that campaign and co-op is really important when you think of, you know, just these games as, as a whole, these AAA titles. We talk about it on the channel here all the time. But online only, uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see what it looks like and how that translate translates once we get our hands on the copy of the game but when you hear that it does kind of it's very disheartening to me at least but that being said the the release date guys so this is huge we don't have a release date for Diablo 4 yet, but Blizzard has confirmed that it won't be out in 2021. 2022 is a possibility, but 2023 or 2024 seem more likely. Given that, back in 2019, game director Louis Barriga said that Diablo 4 was not coming out soon and then added that he meant not even Blizzard soon. So with that being said, obviously it's probably still years away, guys, which is really unfortunate. I'm the type, though, that I'm okay to like with waiting for a title as long as when it releases releases, it's fully done, and it's it's ready to go. I just don't want to end up, you know, obviously having something like Cyberpunk 2077 happen, where they release the game early, and then there's a bunch of bugs, glitches, things of that nature that really hurt the experience. Take your time, Blizzard, release it when it's ready, and then we can all enjoy it for what it is. So, the different gameplay trailers, the trailers, guys, you guys can check out all of those. Uh, that is, you know, some of them are absolutely, you know, fantastic. What we've seen so far um, looks incredible. Three classes were initially announced for Diablo 4, the Barbarian, Sorceress, and Druid. At BlizzCon 2021, Blizzard added a fourth class to the, mix, uh, to the mix, the Rogue, who hasn't appeared by that name since the original Diablo. We've got some details on the Rogue's abilities, and you can see the class in action. And with that, um, I, I gotta say, the Druid, um, I'm sorry, not the Druid, the Rogue, uh, to me, actually looks like one of the best classes. I'm actually really excited to use um, the the Rogue, to say the least. I think it uh, Rogue looks really cool. But all of them have, you know, obviously different, you know, capabilities and things of that nature that make them all seem pretty intriguing. Now, are, there's going to be big changes to items. Blizzard says that its ideals when it comes to itemization are strengthening class identities, supporting deeper customization, giving players a level of depth, depth that sits somewhere between Diablo 2 and 3. We aim to provide years of things to discover and countless ways to build a class. Um, Item qualities and affixes have also been in the crosshairs. Blizzard says it wants to give players more flexibility and doesn't want them to feel like they should just ignore everything that isn't a legendary tier item. We're increasing the potential power of individual affixes on magic items, said Bariga. We're increasing the maximum number of, uh, of affixes on rare and better items in the end game. So, 
I, look, I'm excited about this. I just want to see what this all looks like, guys, when, you know, the game releases so we can really kind of dive into it and we can, you know, understand in, in its totality. I love being able to get items, guys. You know, the big thing for me has always been, you know, getting more earnable items than payable items. And what I mean by that, guys, is when you play the game, I like to earn stuff, right? Earning items and making those, like, legendary items great items, right? Right. Over that, that are like, you know, microtransactions and things of that nature where they're payable items, right? I want to have more items that are, you know, obviously earnable that are, you know, of more coveted, I guess you could say, than the payable items. And we see a lot of games these days not doing that. That's what I want to see here. I would love to see no microtransactions at all in Diablo 4, but it seems like a reality when you have Activision Blizzard, they do that. And it's, it's hard to say. Now, maybe if Diablo 4 is free to play, well, then that means makes, you know, obviously that changes everything. Microtransactions are fine, in my opinion, if, you know, it's free to play. It justifies, um, you know, obviously, you know, all of those things um, if it's going to be free to play. Obviously, you don't want it to be deceptive to us as the consumer, and you don't want it to be pay to win types of uh, mentalities and, and, you know, tactics and things of that nature. But, I just want to have stuff that's more earnable. The earnable items are better than those that are payable. Um, that's just my opinion on it. Now, I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts on that in the, in the you know comment section down below. So say goodbye to inventory Tetris. No more shuffling various shapes around your limit uh, your limited inventory space trying to bring back just one more bit of loot. Blizzard says it wants to avoid interrupting gameplay with pockets of inventory management. Now, ancient items are being replaced. In Diablo 4, ancient items are no more. Instead, Blizzard is opting for a system that will hopefully encourage more unique play styles. Players will earn a consumable that allows them to attach a legendary affix to non-legendary weapons, essentially creating your own ancient items. Which I think is pretty interesting. Exactly how this, this system will work is still being iterated on, though. The quarterly update in autumn of 2020 says that player feedback from BlizzCon indicated that there were changes yet to be made. So... I'll be interested to see what that kind of looks like, guys, obviously, as well. A lot of these things, you got to just see for yourself. Seeing them in gameplay and all of those things, you'll get an idea. But once you get, you know, the full version of the game, a lot of people with, just for example, Cyberpunk 2077, they were only showing people what, you know, they wanted to show people. And then the game releases and it's got all these problems. So what I'm saying is, is I want to be able to have the full version of the game we put it in and we get to experience it for ourselves and we'll be able to kind of see what all this stuff really means at, at that time. Now, as far as the new stats, so Diablo 4 has three new stats. Blizz, Blizzard is adding three new stats to Diablo 4, Angelic, Demonic, and Ancestral Power. Each has its own effect, but they'll also be used as prerequisites for item affixes. Angelic increases the duration of all beneficial effects like self-buffs or healing. Demonic Power increases the duration of all negative effects like debuffs or damage over time. Ancestral Power increases the chance of on hit effects and the skill tree guys looks pretty interesting as of right now it's not final but the skill tree for Diablo 4 looks really uh, cool as well Blizzard talks about Diablo 4's new skill tree. The branches of the tree are where you'll spend experience uh, earned while leveling to unlock new active skills, enhancements for those skills, and passive points. Passive points are spent in the roots of the tree where you unlock additional effects. In the same update, Blizzard details the enchantment system available to the sorceresses. After unlocking a an, uh, sorceress skill, it can be placed in an active skill slot that works the way other classes' active skills work. It can also be placed in an enchantment slot that removes your ability to use it as an active skill but grants a different secondary effect instead. As an example, Blizzard explains the current implementation for the meteor skill which uh, is subject to change, it notes. Meteor allows you to call a fiery chunk of rock from the sky. If you choose to slot it as an enchantment, you won't be able to control your meteors, but they'll fall on enemies periodically. So very interesting. I'm excited about, you know, seeing this, you know, the, the final product of the skill tree. Now, Diablo 4 monsters are classified as families, which is really uh, interesting to me, to say the least. Diablo 4's baddie classification will be a bit different from Diablo 3's. In D4, monsters will be a part of families that share fighting si style. So far, Blizzard has talked about cultists, drowned, and cannibal 
families. So pretty interesting. You know, we'll see the the families. That's kind of interesting. Now, one thing that people really want to know a lot more about is how do the online features work? So BlizzCon attendees were able to get their hands on the game, and our first impression was that it's a game whose stark and desolate look is in contrast with its always online elements, which guarantee that other players will be running past as you explore it. There's no queuing or anything like that, but seeing players who are clearly on the same quest but aren't a permanent part of my world reminds me that this isn't just my adventure. So, that's there's pros and cons to that. I don't really like that. That's just me. I want it to be my adventure. And if I want it to be somebody else's that I'm sharing with or something, I want to be able to make that decision um, at the end of the day. Well, like I said, once again, though, this is another thing that we're going to have to see for ourselves when the full game releases. Um, if you'd like to know more about Diablo 4 Shared World, um, the main takeaways are that dungeons will be instanced for solo or party players, and in the overworld, you'll see more players in towns and safe areas, though there's no option to turn them off altogether, even if you're solo. World events will draw players together, and you'll be able to ride mounts to cross great distances. Difficulty can be set when you enter a dungeon, while above ground, it will be scaled to your level. So you will not be able to play offline, and that is very, very unfortunate, guys. I think that is going to be detrimental to Diablo 4 success, in my personal opinion. Not being able to play offline if you want to um, is going completely away from what how Diablo really started, and that's a big problem to me. Um, now, if it's free to play, obviously that can you know we we can talk about that. But if you're going to pay to play this, and it's an online only type of experience where um, you know you're not able to just play kind of by yourself in your corner of this universe. Um, I just think it's going to be really, it's going to be something that's uh, a tough pill to swallow for, for Diablo 4 fans. But that being said, enemy levels scale so that friends can always play together. Dungeons are private for solo or party players. It's only in the open world where you'll encounter the public. When entering a dungeon, you can select difficulty options. World events will call players together to fight as a group. There is no option to disable seeing other players or an offline mode but you can solo the whole game if you feel like grouping up. So, look, it's obviously um, something that some people are really excited about. Um, I'm excited about having multiplayer. I'm just not excited about the way in which they're doing it where it's like the only mode at this point in time. The last two things are PvP will take place in the fields of hatred. At BlizzCon 2021, Blizzard revealed how Diablo 4's open world PvP will work. You can find the full details, but the gist is that PvP will be contained to areas called fields of hatred. Um, enter one in your fair game. Inside a field, you'll collect shards of hatred by fighting monsters, opening chests, killing other players, and completing other tasks. Hold on to your shards long enough to cleanse them at an altar, and you'll be able to spend them on items from special merchants. If you're killed while holding uncleansed shards, though, you'll drop them, and whoever took your life will get to grab them. Now, Diablo 4 will support controllers for PC, which is interesting, I think really interesting. Blizzard talked in its first quarterly update about how it's designing the user interface with lots of player types in mind. Here's some UI controller specific stuff you can do in Diablo 4, according to the lead UI designer, Angela Del Prior. Uh, switch between mouse, keyboard, and controller without throwing people completely off kilter. Choose to have the action bar in the middle, center, or bottom left of the screen. Open UI screens independently in couch co-op mode, or you can rebind your primary attack to something other than left mouse click. So I think that's really interesting. It will support controllers for the PC. Um, I think overall, guys, I'm really intrigued and excited about Diablo 4. I'm just not really excited that it's going to be just an online-only experience. But hey, maybe it's going to be great because it maybe it'll be free to play. And then everybody can just play it for free. And, you know, you don't have to end up spending the $60 price tag. I kind of doubt it. But with Call of Duty Warzone being free to play, maybe Activision and, and Blizzard are thinking they can make this game the next, you know, next huge title out there that, um, you know, obviously online only experience that you get to play. I just want to know how it's going to work as far as the story from a narrative perspective. Is the narrative really going to be hurt because it's an online only ordeal? 
it's tough to say, but we'll have to kind of wait until we get our, our hands-on impressions and be able to play it for ourselves. But let me know, guys, are you excited about Diablo 4? Do you guys, are you a little bit concerned like I am about certain aspects of it? Even though it looks great, looks fantastic, are you still concerned about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Diablo 4 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. One of the big topics of discussion right now in the Gears of War community is Gears of War Battle Royale or a Gears BR that could come out or should come out from the Coalition and over at Microsoft and Xbox. And it's something that's being talked about not only in the Gears community, but also outside of it from like famous Twitch streamers to YouTubers. And I want to give you guys my thoughts on a Gears BR and will there be a Gears Battle Royale title that comes out. So let's talk about it. So guys, as you guys know, those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I'm a massive Gears War fan. It's one of the big three to me, one of the three greatest games and franchises ever made. You know, it's up there with Call of Duty, StarCraft, and Gears of War is up there as one of what I call the big three. And, you know, when I look at Gears and I look at the numbers and I look at everything that's going on within the community, I do believe that there are things that are going great for Gears of War, but there's other things that need to be updated. There are you know, still things that, you know, Gears of War and even titles like Halo need to get with the times somewhat and consistently evolve, otherwise the game will completely die. So, as an example, a Gears BR, I believe, would be a massive step in the right direction for Gears of War. Now, I've stated that, uh, you know, the community as a whole, the Gears of War community has been one that has just constantly, ever since the coalition coalition took over, they have just constantly had so much backlash against the coalition, which I think has actually hurt Gears, the Gears of War Ultimate Edition to Gears 4 to Gears 5. And the, you know, it keeps going on and on. But a Gears BR, I think, could really bring a lot of people together. I think it could bring the community together in a major way. And if done right, it could be something really special. You can incorporate, you know, kind of the horde elements of, you know, on the map of, of Gears and, um, of a Gears BR, which could really be something interesting where there's, you know, different locusts on the map. There are, you know, obviously, I just think there's a limitless amounts of opportunity here. And we know that Halo with Halo Infinite is going to be having a BR version as well, where there's going to be a battle royale in Halo, which I think is fantastic as well. But I think that Gears needs to be with the times, right? I think it needs to do a BR so that it can continue to advance and kind of you know, slowly but surely kind of continue building upon the legacy and everything that they've started here with Gears. If you stay complacent for too long, your game is going to slowly die. And we talked about this earlier in the show with a game like PUBG. PUBG, which is even way bigger than Gears of War at this point, they are consistently trying to evolve and get better by making a PUBG 2, by doing the Callisto Protocol in that same universe, doing another PUBG mobile game. It's very important, I think, for these big franchises to continue doing it, to continue evolving and staying on top, and, and especially the games that aren't as big to kind of consistently evolve with time. I think a BR would be huge for, for Gears of War. Now, do I think, will, you know, will there be a Gears BR? I do think there will, if we as a community voice our opinion to the Coalition and to Microsoft that we want a Gears BR. I think that... You know, obviously our voices can move mountains because we are the community, right? Now, it all comes down to the way in which we say things. It's, you know, not going at them in, in a certain, you know, with a sort, certain tone or, you know, just blasting the coalition on Twitter and things of that nature. Because I think that's what's really hurt, you know, Gears of War as well. You know, when, you know, supporters, that being, you know, advertisers and sponsors and such look at that from the outside looking in a lot of these sponsors don't want anything to do with gears because of the toxicity that is the gears of war community and so what i'm getting at here is a br could really help us kind of get a little bit of a fresh start it could kind of start something that sure there's still going to be a toxicity in it but with a bigger audience more people playing the br i think it could really help this franchise moving forward so yes, I do think that the Coalition will do it, especially if Halo follows through with the Halo BR, which is another Xbox exclusive. Gears of War will follow suit with Gear 6, I believe. But we as a, as a community need to voice our opinion that we want a Gears Battle Royale. I, for one, 
I definitely want a, a battle royale in the Gears of War universe. I think it needs to happen. I will say that, you know, I'm not the best at battle royale titles. Um, it's not my favorite game mode in the world, but I will say that it's very popular and it's growing on a rapid rate. And I think that they certainly need to do that. Gears of War's done a great job. Each game that's come out, they evolve in certain ways where they add new game modes, like the escape mode, of course, in none other than Gears 5. And, you know, you know, horde mode's great. They're consistently trying to kind of evolve that. And, you know, the multiplayer adding new game modes. But you need to stick with the time somewhat, and I think BR is certainly that as of right now. So BR makes a ton of sense to me with the Gears of War universe. So I think that we as a community just need to tell the Coalition and Microsoft that we want a BR, guys. And I think it will happen with Gear 6 if we voice our, voice our opinion right here, right now. But let me know. What do you guys think? Do you think that we'll get a BR? Do you think that you know, Gears of War should have a Battle Royale, you know, game mode? Or do you think they should, like, not try to follow the trends and kind of stay in their own lane and kind of do what they do best? But, you know, I think that many of us think that they need to evolve to in order to survive almost as a franchise, and that very well may be the case. Let me know, though, in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about a Gears BR? Let me know, and for more Gears of War content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Overwatch 2 is an upcoming title, guys. The sequel, of course, to the first Overwatch, which is really exciting, and at the same time, people had wondered if there was going to really be another Overwatch title after, you know, the first one, because... It seemed like, you know, maybe Blizzard was just going to service Overwatch for the foreseeable future, kind of like League of Legends or CSGO and some of these other titles. But obviously now we're getting more and more clarity on Overwatch 2 after seeing, of course, the reveal trailers. And then, of course, more and more detail is, is servicing the rumblings of when this is going to be coming out, when we're going to be able to get our hands on it. I'm very intrigued by Overwatch 2, to say the least, guys, and I would love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comment section down below when we talk about everything that we know about the title. So let's get into it. So in an article written by Vic Hood and Nick Pino of Tech Radar, a new era of Overwatch dawns. So after seemingly endless speculation, Overwatch 2 was announced at BlizzCon 2019, and it's now one of the most hotly anticipated games around. The sequel to Blizzard's team-based shooter was revealed by creative director Jeff Kaplan at the annual extravaganza accompanied by an emotional cinematic trailer, which it was absolutely, um, you know, I'm, I'm emotional to say the least, guys. With new PvP modes, new maps, cosmetic items, and characters, Overwatch 2 seems to set to push the series forwards, and Jeff Kaplan has said he wants the game to be a true sequel. Even more excitingly, we can expect the addition of story and hero mission missions, which will allow for highly replayable cooperative play with up to five friends, a first for the Overwatch series, and likely to bring a feeling of freshness to proceedings. So... Very exciting, guys, when it comes to that. You know, one of my biggest, you know, takeaways from the first Overwatch, at least from an esports perspective, watching the esports of, of Overwatch and such and the Overwatch League, I, I got to say, the only thing about it that bothered me was the chaos that ensued in, in Overwatch, watching it for, at the highest level, even just playing it, you know, casually. There's just so much that's going on, and I feel like with Overwatch 2, there's maybe an opportunity for them to make it so it's not quite as chaotic, even though it'll be a true sequel. Maybe they're able to make it a little bit more of a viewer-friendly title that you're able to understand exactly what's going on and things of that nature um, from just people who, you know, casual gamers who maybe only play the game a little bit. Um, that's something I think I would, I would love to see, you know, happen here with Overwatch 2. So... Obviously, guys, uh, when is the game going to be coming out or the release date? Uh, Blizzard officially unveiled Overwatch 2 at BlizzCon 2019. Apparently, the sequel is still in early development, and Blizzard doesn't know exactly when it will release, though it's looking like it'll be 2022 at the earliest. In a February 2021 financial call, Activision Blizzard CFO Dennis Durkin said the company's outlook does not include Overwatch 2 releasing in 2021. So, Obviously, that's a little bit unfortunate, but knowing Blizzard guys, they are kind of playing these games and such out way in advance, so it's not too surprising that it's not going to come out this year. 
So raising hopes that 2022 will be the year, in the same call, COO Daniel Allegre said that the pipeline is progressing really well, and we anticipate that 2020 will be a great year for Blizzard. Even more promisingly, Blizzard's J. Allen Brack said that a major internal milestone had been passed in the development Overwatch 2 in November. So 2022 sounds like it could very well be the year, guys. It could be a huge year um, for just gaming in general. We talked about PUBG earlier in the show, PUBG 2 coming out along with the Clist of protocol that could be absolutely huge 2022 could be a big year for gaming in my personal opinion when asked about the game's release during the overwatch 2 reveal panel creative director jeff kaplan said i don't know i have no idea like just let us make it great that's what we care about more than anything we don't have a date in mind so i'm okay with that and i'm totally okay with them just taking their time not rushing it you know, just bring out the best quality title that you can. You guys can check out all the, obviously, all of the different, you know, trailers that have been re revealed and released and such. Uh, they seem really great, at least at this point in time. Now, BlizzCon 2021 may not have brought us a release date for Overwatch 2, but a 40-minute behind-the-scenes video certainly gave an insight into the improvements and additions the game's development team is looking to make. It also offered an insight into why we might have to wait a little bit longer for the game's release date. Um, game director Jeff Kaplan and other members of the development team said that while right now we can sit down and have a night of Overwatch 2 and have it be a really fun experience, they need some more time till we can say it's perfectly polished in the way that we want it. Kaplan himself said that in order to make a great game, it takes time, energy, collaboration. Our goal is for Overwatch 2 to be the worthy success for the successor to the first game, to be the next evolution, and to be a true sequel. I agree, man. I... I absolutely want this game to blow us out, like to blow the first game out of the water, to just be a mind-blowing experience that we all absolutely love. And I'm hoping that's exactly what it is. Two maps were revealed during the video, New York and Rome. Both maps have completely different looks with Rome leaning into romance and ancient architecture, while New York puts a sci-fi spin on art deco. So as far as PVP is concerned, it seems that the development team isn't afraid to experiment with it for Overwatch 2 with the intention of making something that feels like a big department from what's currently there. Tank characters, for example, are being reevaluated in a way that will make them toe to toe brawlers rather than protectors. And it seems that no safe mode, a no mode is safe, as Kaplan suggested that some modes could be replaced for new ones. And I mean, it's it's taken a big risk, in my opinion, with Overwatch as far as from the you know esports perspective. I mean, there's you know millions of dollars. You know, obviously in, in Overwatch, from the Overwatch League, and going from the first game to the second game, if they're going to make changes, I do want them to make it less chaotic, but making some of those changes, if it's not really, you know, ends up not being really good changes or well, you know, has a good response from the community at large, it could really be, you know, it could backfire on them. So it's really interesting to see them doing this, but I like that they're evolving. They're kind of, they're going to stay on their toes and, you know, not get complacent with what they're doing. I really like that in a major way. Now for Overwatch 2's campaign, the story will focus on Overwatch heroes coming together to find out who and why of a second Omnic uprising. The aim is to have the story be a little more integrated into the game's missions than before with seamless cuts between gameplay and cinematic cutscenes, as well as developing character relationships and branching dialogue. Each story mission is going to have its own gigantic custom map, and some of those shown include India, Gothenburg, and Toronto. So, obviously guys, we're not getting a 2021 release date. Um, I'm excited about the campaign. Multiplayer could be really feel fresh. It could feel really new. That's something I'm really excited about. Um, you know, according to Durkin, the company expects Blizzard's net bookings to grow given the momentum in World of Warcraft and the other growth initiatives we have in the business, but added, our outlook does not include Diablo 4 Overwatch 2 launching in 2021, and while Diablo Immortal is progressing well and we anticipate its launch later this year, we don't have any material contribution from the title in our, our outlook presently. So, obviously, Diablo, we talked about that earlier in the show, and Overwatch 2 are going to be coming out, you know, later on.
Okay, and so other than that, guys, you know, they're talking about having larger, more complex maps. And see, this is where I'm getting to like the less chaos, like less chaos. Um, Blizzard is looking to do more with co-op missions in Overwatch 2 by increasing the size of the game's maps and populating them with a wide variety of enemies. In a July 2020 blog post, which touches on development tools and engine being used for the game, Blizzard said that the Overwatch 2's PvE maps are larger and more complex than Overwatch maps like Retribution and Storm Rising. That doesn't just mean more distance to cover, but also longer missions involving more kinds of foes and more elaborate encounters. Adding enemy types leads to complex ability interactions between enemies and heroes, but also between the enemies themselves. So... Uh, look, larger and more complex maps, I'm totally, totally down with that, man. I think that is going to be something really, really special. Now, guys, there's been a lot of leaks. There's been a lot of speculation on when the release dates are going to be. There were some leaks that came out. The official Twitter account for PlayStation Brazil has caused some excitement amongst Overwatch fans, tweeting out that 2020 will be the year Overwatch 2 comes to PS4. The tweet has since been deleted, but a screenshot had been captured, ha has been captured by Voxel. There's been no official comment from Blizzard on the matter, but it's quite possible this was a simple mistake on the part of PlayStation Brazil Twitter team. We won't know for sure until we get an official comment. Previously, Jeff Cap Kaplan is flat out said he doesn't know when the game will launch as it's still in its early stages. Obviously not coming out in 2020, guys. Um, that is, uh, that's, you know, we're already in 2021. Larger maps, more heroes, guys. Uh, that is going to be absolutely awesome. Narrative focus with Overwatch 2. We're building the cooperative, narrative-driven game experience that players have been asking for since the original and that we've wanted to make for a long time, said J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard Entertainment. We're looking forward to telling the next chapter of this epic story and game, and we're excited to give players a whole new kind of co-op experience built around progressing and customizing their favorite heroes, all while providing even more of everything they love about Overwatch today. PvP is still a focus. Despite a heavy emphasis on the new cooperative modes, Kaplan took time to dispel the myth that Overwatch 2 would lose out on the multiplayer modes that made 50 million people play the game in the first place. In fact... According to Kaplan, a huge focus for the Overwatch 2 team is making PvP as good as it possibly can be, which includes new maps, new modes, and new characters further down the line. I mean, can you imagine if they said no more PvP, which means that the Overwatch League would basically cease to exist? Absolutely crazy. Cosmetic items will cross over. So according to Kaplan, all the cosmetic items earned in the original Overwatch will be ported over to Overwatch 2, a move that will help expedite the transition to the new game. And I think that's great as well. Overwatch and Overwatch 2 are compatible. Current Overwatch players can play alongside Overwatch 2 players in PvP multiplayer. In addition, current Overwatch players will be able to play Overwatch 2 heroes and maps. Absolutely awesome stuff, guys. So look, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, you know, we've got a lot of information about Overwatch 2. We've seen the trailers, we've you know heard a lot from these guys. And 2022 seems like it might be the year, which means that we'll probably hear more, even even more here in 2021. Uh, the new engine, guys, Overwatch 2 introduces significant engine upgrades that support larger maps for co-op, PvE play, as well as the wide variety of new enemies and factions that players will encounter on their missions. The game also introduces visual enhancements, obviously. You know, Blizzard still has it when it comes to, you know, cinematics and things of that nature. They do an absolutely awesome job, and, and graphically, it looks fantastic. But with that, guys, I'm very excited and intrigued to see where what we get with Overwatch 2. I think it could be something absolutely huge. I think it could be a great breath of fresh air from Overwatch 1. Let me know, though, guys, what do you all think? Do you guys think Overwatch 2 is going to be something, you know, even bigger and better than that of Overwatch 1? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Overwatch 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. And with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of The 8 Below Show. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive, And as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.